Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Can. Welcome to a very special show. Today we're going to talk to a friend, a watch collector, a curator of boutique luxury as well in the independent space, Boris Pjanic. Welcome to the show again. It's nice to have you. If you guys remember Boris, we had him on the show once before where we spoke about a very custom and beautiful Moritz Grossmann Hamatic. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link in the description, so make sure to check it out. And the Hamatic movement for that price point, yeah, absolutely stunning. Amazing movement. Yes. I mean, this is one of the most interesting current horological movements we have. Really amazing collaboration. It worked out so well. For those who don't know, Boris is the founder of watchesnart.com. You can check out his website also in the description. He's got a few watches for sale, which usually sell out pretty quickly. So make sure to go check that out. And Boris, you started the company in 2010, but you've been collecting watches since the late 90s. How was your journey and how did you decide maybe to shift your focus on selling independent watches in the past years? Well, I started in the late 90s to uh, just look for vintage watches. Um, it actually came through a funny story because I wanted to buy a new watch, but the jeweler didn't let me in. So <laughs> I ended up on eBay, clueless time back then, but it worked out well and um, it got me really deeply connected to watches yeah. and it pulled me in and I collected all kinds of vintage watches and I still do. It's a very, very enjoyable hobby. As I went along, I started uh, to found a company upon my return to back to Germany from America. And the company initially grew with vintage watches, a lot of uh, vintage Rolex, but also vintage Omega, all kinds of watches across the board. I also love chronographs and mm -hmm. try to convey this uh, love for chronographs to my clients as well, from Universal Genève, Zenit, uh, lots of uh, older brands that are not uh, necessarily in the eye as much nowadays or are coming back to the eye and some are not existing anymore like Universal mm -hmm. Genève, unfortunately, but they made fantastic watches back then. And along the way, when, um, when I got into these watches and started a business, um, I decided to go a lot to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, I love Switzerland, it's a beautiful country, but I also love it because it makes the most beautiful watches. Yes. <laughs> um, from um, 2010 to about 2019, to the end of 2019, I primarily sold uh, vintage watches across all brands, as I said. Um, and then at the beginning of 2020, we had a huge impact. The virus that came into the lives of our society um, really caused problems initially. Mm -hmm. um, I had a few very, very calm months and it didn't work really and I couldn't travel anymore. And finding vintage watches depends on traveling yes. and on meeting people and on going to their homes. And then they pull out one watch and then you know, get into a conversation yeah. and they tell you, oh, I, I still have three more. And they bring it out and here you go and you have a deal. You walk away with four watches and you need that flow of watches that comes in. You can't just say, oh, yeah, um, you find a vintage watch with a snap of a finger. So I had to rethink, but it wasn't a sudden rethink. And it was something I had in my mind. And even in the years before, I had every once in a while something independent or lesser known that I got from a manufacturer and tried to sell and mm -hmm. did sell. So when I realized this huge change is coming, it kind of gave me that kick that I needed. So in March of 2020, um, somehow uh, uh, the doors started to open to um, find people that were interested in independent watches. And it all started with a watch that I helped make. It ended up to be a great watch, a bespoke, unique watch for the client. And the client is very happy with it. And after that, he said, you know what, since you helped me so much, I have some other ideas. And that's how we kept on going. And uh, there were a few people that joined in and um, it has developed really nicely. And we're talking here about watchmakers that make partly one or two watches a year or maybe five, which is really not a lot. There are quite wait lists that are comparable to that famous brand from Geneva. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here are other watches that you can, uh, you hardly can get. No, that's not true. You can get them. You just need to have some patience. These watches that are made in such small quantities are just amazing horology. We are talking about the most amazing watchmakers in the world. They are watchmakers who spend incredible amounts of time in finishing their movements. And uh, there's a lot of handwork. And depending on who it is, there are even watches that are 
largely made by hand with old tools. You won't even find a CNC machine. You won't even find a computer with certain brands. Those are rare, but some are approaching it like that. In other cases, you do get the industrial manufacturing and then all the hand finishing that goes with it to make this exceptional watch. And here we have a few examples. Here we do have a few very special examples indeed. So today we're going to talk about three brands, two of them we haven't seen on the channel before. It's actually very special and very rare because we feature already more than 80 different brands on this show. So it's hard to find watches which we still haven't covered. And it's also in the auto lingerie, in the really the high-end independent watchmakers. We're going to talk about a Andrea Strel watch, which is this one here. A Moritz Grossman Peace Unique, which Boris created for one of his clients again. And Alchemist watches with a very special prominence behind it. So Boris, let's maybe start with the Moritz Grossman. Yeah, we have another unique piece, this time for someone else. This was a piece that did take some preparation again. We were in touch for about four months and discussed this wonderful watch with different approaches. We have some inspiration here from two watches that the client found pictures of and they were made by a German watchmaker called Jochen Benzinger. He is also famously known of being a fantastic guilloshur. The two watches that he sent to me with pictures, they had guillosh dials. And that's where we took some inspiration. We started out with blue, then kind of came to the point blue isn't cutting it, mm -hmm. at least not for the taste of my client. And so we ended up with this kind of, I call it a British racing green. It's a kind of a sun ray style guillosh and it was actually very challenging. We have here a special model from Moritz Grossmann. It has a surrounding date complication which has recently been patented and I know there are similar models in history that have surrounding dates. We've seen it before, it's yep. not the first time. However, in this case, the mechanism as it has been developed has been patented. So this watch um, posed quite some serious challenges as uh, we have uh, dials that are quite thin and applying guillosh requires at least 0.6 millimeter of uh, thickness otherwise it's too thin and it would break so here was the challenge we had to find somebody who is able to create this whole dial that we see right now considering the thinness and we approached um, Kari Vutilainen, since we knew from last time he can create something really beautiful. He's got a few skills up his sleeve. A few, <laughs> yeah. So Kari created this whole dial as you see it. The rose gold ring is not equal as it is surrounding. We made it thinner in the lower part and thicker in the upper part. And when uh, Kari started creating the first rendering, we realized that the center dots in that ring weren't exactly always at the same position since it was thicker up there and thinner below. Wow. So the hands were at some point pointing exactly to that yeah. dot. In other points, they were ex excessive of uh, the dot. And we had to account for that. We decided to center everything and live with the fact that the hands are slightly yeah. above the dot. But it posed an another challenge. Yeah. Nobody thought about it it's initially. A, I also think that the choice between the racing green and the south dial for the second hand is amazing. The contrast is just beautiful. And the peripheral date window or mm -hmm. whatever you guys call it, it's just beautiful. You see there's like a special crown here at 10 o'clock. Yeah, you pull it and then it's you a quick move set, it. Huh? It's a quick set, yeah. It goes both directions? In both directions. And the hands are always something that I admire with Moritz Grossman watches, but these are very special ones as well. They are. I mean, first of all, Moritz Grossman is quite obsessive in finishing hands. Yeah, yeah, to um, say the least, yeah. So the hands you see here in this watch are probably altogether taking a full day of work. They are excessively polished to the death, but mm -hmm. their hands are what I would consider probably the most beautiful hands in the business. Yeah. Then the hands here have been not hand blued, but hand browned. Okay. Uh, or it's kind of a brownish color. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's really beautiful, amazing. So it's probably, if you heat blue it, yeah. it's probably at a different stage of the bluing process. Um, you just take it off and that's the color you get? Yeah, exactly. So um, we all know heat bluing and you, I think the next step after blue is brown. You just wait another couple of seconds. T it takes good timing, but yeah. the people who do it, they know how it works. They have no problem with it for sure. Mm -hmm. And this watch is not only beautiful from the front side, there's a gorgeous movement and thank God they decided to do an open case pack. The caliber inside is in-house developed by Moritz Grossmann. All the calibers are in-house mm -hmm. developed and in-house made. They have quite a manufacturer and yep. maybe someday you want to visit. 
Would love to. Mm -hmm. So this is Calibre 100.3. It has the date function, and in this case, it's a more complicated date function. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, the way it works with uh, this uh, little indication mm -hmm. over here, um, it is patented, yeah. so they have a special mechanism that they developed. I think it's a great way of displaying it, the date. Yeah. yeah, it is. And the contrast between the blue colors of the date and the green dial is just looking very, very beautiful, mm -hmm. I think. So this is a hand winding movement with about 42, I think, hours uh, mm -hmm. of power reserve. That's what most of the watches do for, from Moritz Grossmann, yeah. the hand winding pieces. Um, it's in a rose gold case in this case, and we have a fantastic rose gold heavy clasp over here. It's a butterfly clasp. We have an alligator strap. I was thinking about green, but the client ended up uh, choosing brown, and I do think that brown looks nicer. It makes Definitely. a contrast. It's, it's a great combination. Yes. And also, while on the movement, the decoration is just amazing. And always when you bring a Moritz Cosmo watch, I do examine it with my macro lenses, I search for those mistakes, I barely find some. So again, well done. It's a beautifully finished movement. Yeah, yeah. And it's really very beautiful hand finishing. They call it Deutschlands schönstes Handwerk. So it means basically <laughs> Germany's nicest or most beautiful uh, handcraft. Yeah, yeah. And that's really true. They are one of the finest in glass hitter. Yeah, for sure. German yeah. silver movement, correct? Yeah, yeah. Heat blue screws, they're more purple looking instead of the strong blue color. And this movement is something very special. How do you manipulate the crown? And below the crown, there's a special button. So what does that do, Boris? <laughs> Many people know that when they set a watch and they push the crown back in, the hands, or sometimes at least the second hand, starts jumping. Mm -hmm. Um, it's quite annoying when it happens. So Moritz Grossmann found a solution. So when you pull the crown over here, yeah. the balance stops beating mm -hmm. and the second stops running. Then when you set the watch and you can't even push the crown back in yeah. when you set it because you can pull it, you can set, but you can't push it back in. Then you push this little button over here. Then it starts speeding again with the balance and Amazing. it starts running. Amazing. So Boris, for people who want to buy a watch like this from you, how much does this watch cost? Well, first of all, it's a process to get there. So altogether, it was four months of preparation, yeah. then about three to four months of making it. Okay. So altogether, close to eight months. It takes some patience, so it's not like you just walk in and we come up the next day with a concept and then they built the watch. This watch here, specifically as it is with the green dial and uh, with the work of Kari Vutilainen, we're looking at a, a little bit over 60,000 euros. To be honest, sounds fair for what you get. I think it is fair. Um, there's a lot of work going into it, a lot of preparation. I have not counted how many conversations I had and how many hours I spoke, but uh, I hope that my client enjoyed every minute of it. I did. Awesome. So the next watch I'm really interested to see and find out more about is this one. Again, never seen it in person until you brought it to us and never on this channel. So what are we looking at here, Boris? <laughs> so here we have um, something quite special. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, a client of mine actually sent me a picture in a conversation and he's like, Boris, do you know this? watch and I had to say no I don't <laughs> then I immediately I looked at the name alchemists uh, obviously while you're chatting on Facebook it's much easier to google quickly so I googled found the home page immediately went on there and I said wow this looks very very impressive yeah. um, I'm sure many of you will share that with me then I decided to go and contact them then a week later or two or something I came down to Switzerland so I visited the manufacturer which is located in Seigne Ligier and Hervé is one of the co-founders of this brand he's an independent watchmaker and he is a designer and watchmaker basically the one who came up with the design and everything of this watch i fell in love with it i really thought this is fantastic design yes there is inspiration from bove you can always connect to something else mm -hmm. but i thought in a way this watch is unique let me start with the domed crystal this is a crystal I've never seen anything. We know super domed crystals from vintage watches. This is a super, super, super dome. It gives you full view from the side, from the top. It's just an incredible view that you get. Also from the side, when you look at the crown positioning, 
the crown doesn't go into the case it goes actually through the glass yeah. which i've never seen anywhere before me neither and when i realized it uh, in the conversation with Erwin Schlichter uh, and he mentioned it i'm like oh my god how is this gonna work through the glass Damn. well it does work <laughs> yes obviously it's a very impressive piece you have a cylindrical um, hairspring over here which is really cool looking like you can watch how it's beating i mean this is the heart yeah. of a watch and you can watch it live so you have um, power reserve indication of 72 hours over here you have an indicator if you're setting or winding the watch which is over here next to the crown so it's a very complex watch when you're looking at it you're fascinated yeah. and that's what happened to me i saw it live and i was like stricken and i yeah. said wow this looks just absolutely beautiful amazing Hervé uh, told me that it takes him two months of finishing alone this watch for one watch eh? for one watch incredible yeah and you I'm can not... tell the limit now oh, per year. For, for sure for sure so everything is basically showcased on the front side here we have mirror polishing on glass bluing there's also hand hammering below the balance wheel the dial which is actually domed is a circular finish so circlage and the hands for the hour and minute indication, as I see, plus the seconds hands are all domed. Yes. To fit also the glass, plus they're beautifully executed. And I've never seen them before as well. There are so many things worth mentioning on this watch. And one thing that has stricken me a lot is how the winding of this watch sounds and feels. I wish we had something to listen to it because it really sounds the camera, the like, microphone here. like a pocket watch. Yeah. It is a nice click. Huh? It's a nice click. It feels heavy yeah. to wind. And the crown is nice to grip as well. Yeah. So above the winding barrels, we have two mustache shaped springs, mm -hmm. which move once you wind the crown. I really like the look of the movement. And I also like how the domed sapphire basically crystal, which doesn't just go downwards, but actually goes inwards a bit like a bubble, showcases the movement from all sides. That's why I'm not surprised that the case specs closed. Maybe in the future, they'll do a different version where we can see the whole thing. Yep. It would be nice to see this watch in a, maybe a full sapphire case, if that's coming, I don't know. And I also like the few inscriptions on the back. I see that the inscription 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock feature hand hammering and a few poems here or some sayings. So the case is made of a copper and gold alloy. The text you see in the back that's inspired from this alloy and the alloy is uh, something different so this is a unique yeah never seen it before never seen anybody use it so probably it's unique to the brand for sure how much is a watch like this cost the alchemist yeah so um, the alchemist is uh, priced at around 163,000 swiss francs excluding vat so the last but definitely not the least watch we're going to talk about today is the Andrea Strela here. It's one of the watches which we haven't seen on the channel before and I'm really happy to show it to the audience and also for you to tell us something more about it. Recently um, I actually managed to uh, find somebody for one of his other watches that he makes. So this watch is actually in the works right now and I thought um, somebody like Andrea Strela, he makes exceptional watches. He calls himself a watchmaker for a few. The reasoning behind that is probably because he only makes a few watches, but he is a very ingenious uh, watchmaker and he comes up with ideas and designs that are very unusual, also with problem solutions that are, not everybody is coming up with. And I think his watches uh, really are absolutely special. I find, first of all, his case is absolutely special. Very unique. It's kind of like a TV case, maybe yeah. like a... So it is from every position, it has the same size. Mm -hmm. um, 41 millimeter. When you wear it on your wrist, it feels very comfortable because the lugs are quite short. Mm -hmm. When he initially designed this, the lugs were a little longer, then he cut them a little shorter as he went along. This is a very special piece. It's called the Heure Mondiale, so it's a world time watch. Yeah. It's not like what you know from a usual world time watch. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a little more special. There's a couple uh, extra functions on it. So we have a prototype over here, which is why this watch isn't running. Otherwise you would see at 10 o'clock how the remontoire is running. That is a mechanism to recharge energy. Mm -hmm. So to conserve some energy and increase efficiency and accuracy of a watch. At around eight, you have the earth uh, and you have a look on the earth from the North Pole all the way down 
it's kind of a little bit like a night indication yeah. or something like that. Then on the case back, that's where you find uh, the time zones and you also have right next to the crown, you have a moon phase and Andreas is known for the most accurate and longest running moon phase that is even it's losing one day in two million years. We can't check it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> we won't be around for that Well, long, we can yeah. try to make another video in two million years. Um, and then you have uh, all the GMT settings over here, which is pretty complicated. You can set it on GMT, and then you have different cities in the world that would show you um, what time it is. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And we, if we look at the, the finishing also on the dial, it's just amazing. Yes. The blue dial is what I assume Guilloche made as well? It is a Guilloche dial. It has two different patterns. Uh, one in the main dial indicating hours mm -hmm. and minutes. It's kind of a sunburst style. Yeah. And a rather simple looking remaining yeah. Guilloche surrounding it. it looks like a maybe Clos de Paris or like small pyramids. Yeah. Just beautiful. Something like that. And the like. numerals, Breguet numerals, yeah. beautifully applied. And there's a sapphire minute track around the dial. Yes. Show something. Yeah. Cool. A cool idea, isn't yeah, it? it? Yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. He has that sapphire ring on other watches as well. He's using it on his uh, Papillon d'Or. Yeah, 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 which is beautiful. Huh? Yeah. For people who don't know, he was also one of the Opus watches he created. Yeah, he created actually quite a few other things, some movements for some quite well-known uh, brands mm -hmm. and watches. Even every watch that Andreas uh, delivers is solely hand-finished by him. Yeah. Takes him quite a while. So he's quite limited to, uh, with his output in a year. For I'm sure. Probably looking at a handful or something. More is a little difficult. The pointer here is heat blued. And we also see on glass here on the movement. Yeah. Again, we don't see an Andrea Steller watch often. So it's really nice to see one in person. Although being a prototype, still amazing. Yeah. The crown has also a special shape, which yeah. I haven't seen before. Looks really comfortable to use. It has a very good grip. And the case actually, like you said, wears really well on the wrist. Yeah. On the photos, this watch looks a bit bigger, but in person, when you see it, it's a very delicate timepiece, and I think it really surprised me. As you can't find this watch at a local retailer, what does something like this cost? This model specifically, I think it's priced at around 125-ish thousand Swiss francs, okay. excluding VAT. If there is something that's changed or something, it will be a slightly yeah, more. Yeah, makes sense. Mm. And the watch that your client's gonna get, which model is it and how much does that one cost? Um, the client, he is getting a Papillon d'Or, okay. which is a completely skeletonized piece. Yeah. And it has a Papillon, which mm -hmm. is the French word for butterfly in front, yeah. not in the back. Mm -hmm. The Papillon is kind of a signature of Andreas' movements. So that watch is coming to 108,000 Swiss francs, okay. excluding VIT. Again, beautifully hand-finished, uh, very, I think, um, benchmark piece for Streller, yeah. something he's known for. Yeah. So I can't wait to see that one day, maybe. We are expecting it probably in the first quarter of next year. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So I know you always finish your videos with the famous wrist shot. Yes. <laughs> and th this time we'll accommodate it for all three watches. Please be my so guest. So we'll start uh, with the Alchemist. Sits beautifully on the wrist. What's the diameter, the height? The diameter is 44 millimeters, Marco, and uh, the height is 15 millimeters, considering this Big domed crystal. That's yeah, it's not that bad, yeah. Not too bad, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So the next one is Moritz Grossmann. Um, the date is an extra complication, so it needs a little room. Uh, the Moritz Grossmann is 41 millimeters in diameter and about 11.8 millimeters high. That's also a good size for a classy watch, right? It is. Perfect. And I'm curious about this one. It's hard to find some information on it. The Andrea Strela, what's the diameter, what's the height? So the Andrea Strela is also um, 41 millimeters uh, in case size, and it's about 11.9 millimeter high. So pretty similar to the Moritz Grossman. Pretty Grossmann, similar basically. to the Moritz Grossman. Okay. Boris, thank you for showing us all these beautiful creations here. Really thank you for coming all the way from Cologne, Germany to see us here in Zurich. Guys, if you want to inquire about one of these watches, just not this one because it's already sold out, but if you want to commission a special piece from these brands or other brands you also represent, just hit up Boris. You can find his contacts on his website, watchesandart.com. Also, he's got social media presence on all the channels. You've got a very extensive YouTube list with videos of watches 
probably even my audience hasn't seen yet, so definitely check that out. I have two channels with which have kind of names from a time when I started it and didn't think it would ever become something. Yeah. So if somebody wants to look up on YouTube, the best way to find all my videos is to type in first watchesandart.com mm -hmm. as a full word and then it will show about 350 or something videos that I took over the years, mostly during my visits in Switzerland or when I met with friends and people and collectors and uh, shot videos. Another thing is we are talking about uh, picking up on this design. It's not going to ever become a second watch like that, mm -hmm. but a similar watch inspired from this watch. We are working on something like that maybe okay. for later in the year, but it's gonna be most likely a date maybe a GMT. We are still talking about this, so okay. we'll see what this will become. And other than that, um, I thank you very much, Marco, for having me here in Zurich. And it's been a beautiful day, which yeah. we unfortunately spent inside, <laughs> but lunch was nice. Lunch was good, definitely. <laughs> so guys, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and also share with somebody who likes watches as much as we do. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next week.